What's happening everybody? My name is Charles Maring and today I'm going to talk about embracing the mystery that is you. Yes, I'm going to get a little philosophical on you guys today when it comes to art and entrepreneurship. Uh, but first, let's cut to the intro. <laughs> Oh man, I gotta tell you, this is, I am so pumped about modern technology and how embracing it allows us to have the power in the hands of the individual creator, the camera at the center of it all, of course, uh, as an entrepreneur, as an artist, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're a photographer, if you are a filmmaker, if you're a painter, a fashion designer, entrepreneur of any kind, the camera is at the center of all of your marketing and all of your information, getting the word out about who you are and what you do. Uh, and it's incredibly powerful. And so today I want to talk a little bit about some of these things, but mostly about embracing the mystery that is you and how doing that can make artistry and entrepreneurship so much fun and just take you out of the world of worry and thinking about the future constantly and being able to embrace the now and enjoy the creative process as opposed to worrying about how you're gonna get to where you're going. Let's talk about that a little bit. You know, uh, as an artist, it can be incredibly easy to become complacent in your work. True as an entrepreneur as well, I'm guilty of it. I've had moments where I became too complacent. Uh, and I think what happens is if you have any success in your career as a photographer or artist out there, uh, you reach a point where you say, well, I'm making a little bit of money financially. It, this is working. So let's, it's not broken. Let's not try to fix it. Or creatively speaking, you find a creative zone as a painter, let's say, and you get into a zone of doing a specific look in your work and you've, you've got it down. You're like, well, let me get to become the best at this. Uh, and that can't, that's not always good either because if you're not willing to take risk and step outside of your comfort zone and do something different here and there, you're not able to see your work from the outside and see all the possibilities from the outside. So it's important not to become complacent. It's important for you to really be pushing forward in order to grow both financially and creatively speaking as well. And I know why. I mean, embarrassment is part of the puzzle, right? We don't want to embarrass ourselves. We get great at photography and we reach the point where we're like, okay, well, I'm good at this. So I'm not going to really go into video or I'm not going to go into painting or I'm not going to go into other creative directions. I'm, you know, I don't want to embarrass myself because I'm already successful at this. And that's what the world thinks I should be. And the problem is if you're not willing to embarrass yourself, you're not having personal growth. And I get it, our entire, entire lives, you know, I know when I'm a kid, when I was a kid, my mom would have in the grocery store be like, don't embarrass me. And you kind of grow up learning, don't embarrass your parents, which means don't embarrass yourself, of course, as well. We all live through those high school and teen years, same thing, we avoid embarrassment at all cost. When you're an adult, you hopefully realize that embarrassment is the smartest thing you can do to yourself to have personal growth. Uh, you have to feel the pain. Uh, and I'll tell you a little story about it. Now, uh, you see me in the vlog here. I play my guitar. I sing. Uh, I play in a rock band. Uh, well, it's taken me a long time to reach that point in terms of not being willing to step outside of my comfort zone. It's taken me several embarrassing moments. In fact, one time uh, I was at a Christmas dinner at a celebrity table with a bunch of people uh, at a very nice restaurant and they all knew I played guitar. Uh, and uh, some singers came around playing the guitar and some guy was singing, one guy playing and singing some beautiful songs, whatever. And somebody at the table stepped up and said, oh, you should sing us a song to me. And I'm like, no, 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 not going to do it. Not definitely not doing that. And then everybody joined in and suddenly I was in a position where I had no choice. I had to stand up and sing. And so guy hands me the guitar and... <laughs> Uh, when he handed it to me, all felt well, except about five words into the song, I realized 
this guitar is massively out of tune. And so my voice, I sound like a hound at this point. And I put the guitar down and I hand it to him and I say, uh, no, nah, this is way out of tune. He's like, no, it's not. And he, he picks it up and he's like, oh, it is out of tune. And the, and the funny thing is though, from that moment forward, from that embarrassing moment forward, I went on a mission to say, you know what? I'm going to practice this until I'm able to do it confidently to where I don't ever have this problem playing in public and, and, and picking up the guitar and singing. And then I ended up creating a rock band and so on and so forth. The key to that next progressive move in your career is becoming embarrassed because it's going to leapfrog you into making sure that doesn't happen again. Little philosophy on that. Who are you as an artist? I mean, think about this. Who are you? I think it's really easy as a creative individual to get wrapped up in, in where we think we should be and to suffer because of that. You know, you look at what the you look at the success of peers or others and you think, man, I would love to be doing that. But really what you should be focusing on is just being the best you that you can be. It's incredibly important. It can also be easy to get wrapped up in what you think you're supposed to be to the rest of the world and how the rest of the world is seeing you as a successful individual. And the truth is we can never live up to that. We can never live up to what the world wants us to be. We can only be the best us we can be. You know, I've been going to the gym now for, for many years and I go in each day and I sit down and I start lifting weights and I'll run afterwards. But every day I say to myself, why the hell am I doing this? What, I mean, what am I gaining out of this? And I have to remind myself that my goal as an artist, as a person, is to feel my best and to, to try and create the best me I can. And so that's part of the puzzle regardless of what you're doing. So don't focus on the outside influences or where you think you're supposed to be at this point in your life. Just keep focusing on growing and being a better you tomorrow than you were today, you know, and just grow and be the best you you can be. And I think, you know, if we get that picture in our minds, incredibly important to do of where we want to be as a musician, maybe it's playing on a big stage to hundreds of thousands of people. As a painter, maybe it's having a big gallery exhibit in New York and selling it out. As a photographer, it could be photographing celebrity jobs and traveling the world. It's, it's different for everybody, I think. It's important to have those pictures in your mind, but it's also important to realize that uh, who you are today is what's most important. And each day that you grow and feel a little bit of motivation brings that happiness. So try to enjoy the creative process and not to suffer over these things. Because the irony is, you're exactly who you're going to be and supposed to be right now if you choose to just kind of look at it that way and embrace the mystery of who you are. Let's talk about the good opinion of others. Uh, it's an incredibly important topic. Uh, and the reason being is yes, we can learn from the good opinion of others. We can learn to grow artistically. We can grow artistically through the good opinion of others. But the key is not to take it personally. And this is true in art. This is true politically. You know, the moment you start taking something personally, the moment you stop feeling happiness. And so it's good to get opinions about your artwork. It's good to, to kind of get some feelings of what others think, but it's also important to, again, embrace the mystery of who you are, regardless of the good opinion of others. Because the opinion of others can lead you down the wrong road just as easily as it can lead you down the right road, without question. Let's talk about photographic competition with that in mind. Humbly, I can say, um, I have won the grand award at WPPI for the International Photography Awards. I've placed first, second, or third several years consecutively as well. And um, the thing is, Winning those awards is incredibly important to me because it allowed me to realize that I understood technical excellence. I understood uh, composition, but it doesn't define what I create these days. And, and I want to talk about that a little bit because after winning the awards, I ended up judging for several years in a row on a panel of five judges and kind of seeing prints or albums come through. Uh, and sharing my opinion on things. And then I ended up chairing the competition for several years. 
And let me also say that I have failed epically entering competition and entering work that I know in my heart still today was my best work. But the five opinion of others did not, did not see it the same way where, you know, I would say that's a perfect 100 and they would say, no, it's a 75. And so having those moments of embarrassment are incredibly important to yourself, even though nobody else would realize that because it helps you to grow and helps you to want to be better and do better. But competition is very valuable when you're young in your career. Uh, incredibly important to learn what is technical excellence. What does it mean to keep highlight in, uh, detail in the highlights of a photograph and in the shadows all at once? What is good composition? But what you don't want to do, once you learn all of that, once you have the awards, once you feel comfortable that you know that, you don't want to become an industry clone and just be creating the same work that everybody else is creating because it wins competitions. Uh, you want to be an artist that's thinking for yourself, embracing the mystery that is you and creating work that is antagonizing in some ways. Because if it's not antagonizing somebody and somebody's saying something negative about it and the five, a good opinion, five good opinions of others disagreeing that it's the best it can be, then maybe you have failed to create something that causes conversation as an artist. The more I learned to uh, paint, and I started painting about eight years ago, the more I decided that I was done judging the creativity of others. And I stepped down from being a chair or a judge and just have been living in a little bit of freedom uh, of, of judging others' work. And it's a really nice place to find myself these days because I know that I, I see the world a little differently now than I ever have. I used to be the person who would walk into a modern art gallery, let's say, and walk through as a photographer, especially look at composition and judge the composition and look at the, uh, what I was seeing and judge it for all that it was. And I would walk out confused sometimes like that's art. That's worth $10,000. It makes no sense to me. I don't get it today as a painter uh, and having stepped down from the judgment zone. I see the world so much differently because now I try to embrace what I do like about it and try to find something of substance to it and embrace the mystery of what I'm seeing, embrace the mystery of the artist as opposed to judging what it is that they're trying to achieve. And when you start to have that realization and you stop judging things and stop judging others, you, you, reach a point where you seek moments that you can embarrass yourself. You seek moments to put yourself out there in different ways that you know could backfire. Even this today, I decided, okay, I'm just gonna talk philosophically, do something a little different, could backfire. Who knows what it's going to bring? Uh, but once you reach that point where you embrace embarrassment, you'll seek opportunities to have embarrassment because you know it's the only way you're gonna grow forward and move forward and have personal growth. And that's when the creative process becomes the process of your dreams. That's when it becomes so much fun uh, to be an artist and an entrepreneur. So get out there, keep creating, find ways to embarrass yourself, find ways to embrace the mystery that is you individually. Because I gotta tell you, that's where the fun is. That is what it's all about. And that's my little philosophical talk here today. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining me. And uh, any questions you have, certainly reach out. Hit the like button if you would, and certainly subscribe. I so appreciate it. I'm feeling just this little bit of momentum on YouTube channel right now, and I'm like, gotta keep this moving. Appreciate you. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.